Hello, Welcome. everyone. Welcome. This is going to be a special program. Yes, it is. We had the best time at the NRB, the National Religious Broadcasters, where we saw Max Greiner, who sculpted the lion. <laughs> the li not only the lion, the oh, many lion <laughs> of Judah. <laughs> yes, and many other. He is an extraordinary sculptor and artist. And uh, we're going to talk with him about it. Mm -hmm. And you'll be blessed when you hear what God has done. Yes, how true. And Gloria Elliott is singing for us, Speak to the Mountain. God has given us authority as his children to speak to the mountain in our lives. If you believe, you will receive. If you'll obey, God will make a way. Do not doubt, he will bring you out. But love is the key to walk in victory. Oh, then you can speak to the mountain, be cast into the sea. I said, speak to the mountain. God gave me authority, so I'm going to speak to the mountain. You will not hinder me. Well, I speak to the mountain, and I walk in liberty. Now in verse John 3, it's plain to see God's word is true for me and you. But do what he says and love one another. Yes, and we must forgive each other. Then we can speak, speak to the mountain. You be cast into the sea. I said, speak to the mountain. God gave us authority, so we're gonna speak to the mountain. You will not hinder me. I said, speak to the mountain. And I walk in liberty. I said, I'm going to speak to the mountain. You be cast into the sea. Oh, speak to the mountain. God gave me authority. So I'm going to speak, speak to the mountain. You will not hinder me. Well, I speak to the mountain. And I walk in liberty. Oh, you will not hinder me because God gave me authority. Yeah! Yes. We are here at the NRB with our guest, Max Greiner, who is an internationally known artist. And he has works in all 50 states, 80 countries, Billy Graham had one of his sculptures. Our president has the open cross. I think a past pope, and this man is well known. His work is incredible, and we are so blessed to have him with us. And he's a dear friend. Yes, he is. With that, that's greatness. the most important. <laughs> and we do have the amounts up till now this is the announcement that we've ever made. Mr. Max Greiner, tell us what's happened. <clears throat> well, first, thank you for letting me be on your show. And I love these people. I've known them for <laughs> over 20 years, and, uh, and you are the best. Um, you know, and I've been around all the stars of, by the grace of God and Christianity because of my artwork, but you two are the, some of the finest human beings and his kids that I know of. And I just thank you for who you are, what you do, and the way you lift up Jesus. Amen. Because I'm you. proud to know you, and I thank you. Now, we've got big breaking news. Um, two years ago, we were here, and we had a dream to put my number one life-size line of Jesus sculpture in Israel as a gift of love from American Christians to the people of Israel. And for two years, we've been trying to make that happen. And the big line, the number one casting, that's 11 feet long and 1,134 pounds has been sitting in a warehouse in Bet Shemesh right outside of Jerusalem waiting for them to receive the gift. Well, this morning, about two or three hours ago, I received an email on my computer 
from the deputy mayor in Jerusalem with a news release that's approved that's saying they, they will receive it, they appreciate it, and they're placing it in Park Blumfield in Jerusalem between Mount Zion and the King David Hotel and that it will um, be placed uh, very soon and that's the breaking news and we at all agree we weren't going to say anything until we got the official permission from Jerusalem and we got it on the city letterhead and everything this morning and so you are the first media wow. people to know <laughs> about this wonderful miracle God has worked because we just wanted to bless Israel and it's been kind of hard to do that. <laughs> you know, all we want to do is bless them. And, uh, but, but thanks to uh, you and others, we now want to lift up the word and share it. And, uh, and this gift was made possible by the gifts and donations of others who joined Sherry, my wife, uh, and I uh, to make this gift. And the Foundry Eagle Bronze donated their profits. We donated our profits and it's about a hundred thousand dollar bronze so it's kind of an expensive thing and uh, and then different people we had the leadership inc headed by jeff anderson was a foundation 501c3 that allowed us to raise the money the rest of the money to cast it get it over there and then uh, linda morris morris with go to yavo ministry was the first pro-israel ministry to sow into this project so she's been helping us and then there are people like you and universities and ministries and individuals for the last two years that have been trying to make this happen. So I came over to you this morning and I was still kind of shaking. <laughs> yes, you were. Jane, <laughs> you had to pray for me, calm me down. It's like we I'm, prayed peace yeah, over Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, the, and you know how the enemy is. I mean, you try to do something for God and he Ooh. fights you. And I got uh -huh. an email this morning at 8.30 and then all four of my email servers went down where I couldn't send it out. Like I had this great news and suddenly everything went haywire. And I finally, after two hours, you know, they started getting out. But I mean, it was a battle. It reminded me, you know, of Daniel. And when he, the message was sent to him by God, but he said he was withstood by the Prince of Persia. I don't know yes. if I got the Prince of Persia, but I got somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Prince of Nashville. I don't know. But, but all I know is we did ask God to dispatch Michael and even Gable if he wants. And let's get this word out and shout it from the rooftop. So thank you so much for letting us share this wow. wonderful news about this gift. Thank you for letting us. Well, this awesome. has been a heart's desire of ours yes. to have this kind of an announcement because we all wanted to bless Israel. Yes. And this is one way we have to do it. Absolutely. Yes, and well, thank you. Well, when is it going to be dedicated? Uh, the dedication we thought was going to be um, the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of June. But this thing going around with the virus right now, um, we don't know if that's going to be moved back. And it was going to be coincide with the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. And, and the mayor, the new mayor of Lyon, new mayor of Jerusalem, who happens to be named Lyon, Moshe Lyon, I um, he had that already met. <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? So interesting. Yeah, because we've been. Well, you can't make this up. No, can you? God, that's his thumbprint. So the mayor of Jerusalem right now is Moshe Lyon, or Leon, I think they say it. And uh, so we don't know at this moment, but it'll be this summer, but it will be installed very soon. So it can get installed and start blessing Israel. And we hope it brings them millions of dollars in tourism. I mean, yes. that's really a blessing to all the people of Israel. And it'll be a symbol of uh, strength and yeah. courage <clears throat> and power yes. and shalom and yeah. all the things. It, it's, it's a different kind of a line sculpture. And, uh, and, and I really want people to be able to look into that face of that line. And I prayed it, that they would see uh, the Messiah of the Jews that they would see that something in those eyes, something in that face that would yeah. remind them of the Messiah that's predicted in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Well, I know a lot of prayer has gone on. Yeah, my slide. not holes in my knees and my pants. <laughs> and that, you are a man of prayer. When you do stuff with God, it's like this. It's a ride, it's like a roller coaster. It Thanks is. to you and hundreds and even thousands of people that have been praying for the last two years that this gift would be made, it's finally been announced today in the city. Amen. And those that sowed into it, I know are so Amen. excited. Amen. 
tell us how the lion came about in the first place. Well, um, you know, you've interviewed me in the past graciously, and, and I've shared about a sculpture, Prayer Garden Vision, that God gave us, and we built the first one in But back in 2006, we had just received this property on Interstate 10 to build this garden for Jesus, and we cleared the top of the mountain with a bulldozer so we could see the views. And there was this beautiful point that extended out like a peninsula over the city of Kerrville in the interstate. And I was standing out there and I said, God, this is a great place for a single sculpture. What do you want here? And I believe that still small voice spoke to me and said, I want a Ten Commandments monument here with a big lion on it, Lion of Judah. And I went, oh man, that would be great, this location. And it was shortly after that that I also said, well, God, if you're going to do that, could you just get one for Israel? <laughs> because Israel would be a wonderful place, but I thought, that's impossible. But, but you know, when you share your dreams, you share your prayers. Nothing you is impossible. Yeah, and you speak it into existence, and then God makes his will happen in our hearts when we ask and when we pray. And so first, Sherry prayed for it to happen, and then others came. And again, Jeff Anderson and Barbara Anderson prayed on this dream, and they said, we'll help you with our foundation, raise the money. And, uh, and then again, uh, Linda Morris and her husband, Bob, uh, they said, we'll be the first donors. And so, uh, and, and you guys have also been some yeah, of the donors yeah, to make this happen. It. And so it's really a, a gift from all of us. It's not a gift to me. It's a gift from the body of Christ to the people of Israel. And, and hopefully they'll see it just like, you know, the Statue of Liberty was given to America right. from France. France. Yeah. As a, and it's a symbol of friendship forever. This lion's made of bronze. It's gonna be here forever and ever and ever, <laughs> you know? That's wonderful. And, and so, well, it was confirmed though, wasn't it? Oh yeah. About where that lion would go in the garden. Tell uh, us about yeah, not, yeah not, it, not only was it confirmed was it gonna go in the garden, I, I, it was also confirmed as soon as I got the idea because I got a phone call from the, uh, the stewardship leader of the Church of God and he said, Max, this, uh, did you just get an idea for a Ten Commandments monument? The president of the Church of God just said, God spoke to him and said, call that artist. He just got an idea for a Ten Commandments monument. So that confirmed the idea. And then once it was, you know, it was working, we were hoping it would be in Israel, which was the, and then the end of Jerusalem, the best place. Then we really asked for God to pick the spot, and we had no control over that. That was a city decision. But by the grace of God, uh, Mayor Fleur, and let me pronounce her name right here, um, Fleur Hassan Nahum, I believe. Fleur Hassan Nahum has been graciously working with us to make this happen. And, uh, and she got with the art committee and Mayor Leon, and they have picked this spot in Park Blumfield which I'm told is one that is visited by the citizens of Jerusalem as well as the tourists. And that makes it kind of unique because some of the you know, tourist attractions, the natives don't go to. Just like yeah. any town that's got a tourist attraction, you don't go mm -hmm. to it, everybody else goes. And so we think it's gonna be one of the best locations. But it's between Mount Zion it, and the King David King Hotel, David is Hotel. that correct? Right, right. Amazing. <laughs> we shall see yep, about the dedication this quick. summer. Yeah, well, we'd love to go too. Yeah, well, I see the kind of glory is forming on your face right now. <laughs> Look right here, guys. Right there, a blue green. God, God loves this guy. He loves her too. <laughs> but, but you didn't put yes, a bunch of glitter on this morning, did you? No, God's no. doing that. that. See, that's one of the manifestations that's happening with this line I made, and people walk up to it, and they they get what we believe is the Shekinah or Shekinah glory that farms on them, and it's happening in Kerrville at the garden, but we're praying that God will show off in Israel, he'll heal people, he'll bless people, and he'll even put this glory, which we believe is the same substance that was on Moses when he came down with the Ten Commandments, and it said he shined, he sparkled. Mm -hmm. And so, well, uh, God, let me see that. We're gonna talk about that a little later yeah. for skeptics, like the skeptic <laughs> that came. Yeah. The ABC Fifth affiliate. Yeah, yeah right, right. But before we get to that, I'd like for you to talk about what Mehan Shab just said concerning the garden. What he prophesied over you and Sherry. Okay. Well, again, you know, the line went into a garden that's 24.5 acres on Interstate 10, and that happened right after God gave us the property. But the way God gave us the property is Sherry and I went to uh, the Cathedral Praise Church, Dr. Bill Hart, in Austin, Texas on December 9th, 2001. 
and we just went to hear about a guy that had raised the dead. And we, you know, our, where our roots are former Southern Baptist, and so we don't do a lot of that in the Baptist church, you know, where you bring in the casket slide and the rice. Um, but anyways, we heard about Dr. Mahesh Chapa, so we came to hear him and meet him, and uh, and we, we we met him on the way in. We sat down in the church to hear him speak, and he's starting to preach. And suddenly he stops and he looks at me and says, where's that artist and his wife stand up? And we don't do that at the Baptist church either, by the way. <laughs> but you call somebody else and have them stand up. But then he spoke a prophetic word that was recorded on video. And he basically said that Sherry and I would be involved in restoring a type of the uh, tabernacle of David. And that God would use us in my art to decorate these tabernacles. And that Thousands of people would come to Christ through that, and uh, I mean, we didn't know the guy. He didn't know us. He didn't know our story. But he says this, and everybody claps in the charismatic church. And but I, I want you to also mention about the attorney. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. Thought, I yeah. don't need yeah, an And all attorney. this prophecy was recorded. It's on our Griner website. It's www.maxgrinerart.com. But it's it's recorded the video. I mean, amazing that we've got a recording of it. Yes. But, but yeah, so he starts to prophesy. And he starts off with a sentence that didn't seem, you're getting the glory now, it's forming on yeah. your, your lips. It's forming right there between your nose and your lips. Um, but um, he started by saying, God will be your attorney. And that's not a very good prophecy. <laughs> I mean, that means I'm gonna be sued. But I said, no, that must not be part of the prophecy. He went on then to explain about the garden, people will walk the paths and find God. And, uh, and anyways, then it all came to have started happening and then we got sued, and we got sued in 2008. And sure enough, we needed God as our attorney. And we went through two years of lawsuits. The atheists and the others were against this garden, which presented the gospel. A huge cross. Yeah, and it's a huge, open, hollow, empty cross. And uh, and the gospel in 77 Bible verses, in a, in a cross that garden in Spanish, English, and German. And that was the plan. We announced it in the public, and as soon as we announced it, all hell broke loose. And y'all have done stories in the past of the Bible, and that was, you know, 2006 to now, 2010, the cross went up, 2015, we finished it, and, and it's drawing hundreds of thousands of people a year off of the interstate highway from all over the world, and people are being saved by the thousands, people are being healed, people are being empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Charismatics call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm a Baptist, so I just say it's the empowerment. Just want to make people sure they get it. It's 1 Corinthians 12, by the way. Look that up. 1 Corinthians is the supernatural gifts. And then people are getting delivered. And 29 people have canceled suicide at that garden that we know about. And so, I mean, it's, it's pretty exciting with what God's it doing. It is. And, and so that prophecy was fulfilled. And again, I was pretty suspicious in my early days that prophecy was even still valid. I thought it ended, but no, it doesn't. The Bible says that it continues on, the gifts continue. Amos 3, 7. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so this is a major confirmation. And if you allow me, I'll tell about the $500,000 hawks. Can well, I that share was that? my next question. Okay. Would okay. you share well, how you know, that? You, as I say, so you can share a lot of miracles that God does for us. We can all, and a lot of people say, eh, that ain't real. You didn't really hear him. You, you know, you're not really healed or either, oh, that would have happened anyways. And they discount God's miracles. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to do that. When we get the answer to our prayer, we're supposed to thank him yes. and give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, anyways, we got one miracle that's really good for atheists and, and non-believers because God had a man hand me $500,000. Have I got anybody's attention yet? $500,000. And his name was Herschel Reed, and he knew about the garden, and he prayed, God, if you want me to give Max Greitner $500,000 to buy this land on Interstate 10 to build this sculpture prayer garden for Jesus. Um, I want to open my eyes and look up and see a hawk floating over my head. Herschel opened his eyes, he looked up, and there were almost a dozen Northern Harrier hawks <laughs> floating over his head. Now, hawks are rare. You'll see one, you'll maybe see two, yeah. rare to see three but they were hovering over his head and the rest of us that were praying for this God to give us this land. And it freaked him out. He put out a fleece. He'd never done it before. We didn't know about it that he was doing this, but he saw the hawks and it scared him to death. It scared him so bad he left the mountain with his two daughters. And uh, 
The next day, he gave me $500,000 to buy that land on Interstate 10 that's actually worth millions, God given us favor. And so that's a major miracle. We got the land, the story's on the internet, and we even had an attorney's wife there, Becky Johns, that had a video camera, and she recorded us putting the cross in the ground and claiming it for Jesus, and then a scorpion charged the cross. It's a picture of Satan. My wife Sherry crushed the scorpion with her foot. Then my nephew Sam said, look up in the sky. And suddenly hawks started appearing, not buzzards. And I'm a wildlife guy, I know the difference. Yeah. And they started, and so she videotaped it. So we actually have this miracle on film mm. that caused, and that man, Herschel, he's a man of God, yeah. you know. And he wasn't gonna budge, he already told me he wasn't gonna give us a dime unless God said do it. <laughs> So God said, do it, and he did. And he's just been a tremendous blessing. And, and the miracles have gone on. Uh, I don't know how much time we got, but we no, have. We've got time to talk about these okay. miracles. Oh, I, I want to talk about the snakes that left. Okay, well, that's, that's kind of the next thing. So we got the line. We started clearing it. And the Church of Christ, Basil McKay, bulldozer contractor, he says, Max, the snakes are leaving the mountain. And I said, what do you mean? He says, the rattlesnakes, they're all going off the top of the hill here down to the interstate, and the Chevrolet dealer, and uh, <laughs> going downhill. And I said, what? And this guy's Church of Christ. You know, and I did pray for him for the gifts though, 1 Corinthians yeah. chapter 12. <laughs> and, uh, and sure enough, they saw him leaving. And then the next week, eight days later, they're working with their bulldozers and stuff, and a pure white dove descended onto the land and just stopped in front of their equipment and they just turned their machines off and stared at this dove. Not a, not a white wing dove, not one of the species that we hunt and stuff. This is a pure white dove. And they just watched it, and, they, and I had to drive in 30 minutes from their house. When I got there, it finally left, and I said, where did it go? And he said, it went over there by where you're gonna put that big cross. And I said, well, did it fly over there? And they said, no, it walked. <laughs> really? How many doves do you know that do a lot of walking? <laughs> <laughs> They're not wow. that many, but but literally God, and we claimed it for God. We told the devil to leave. The snakes literally left, and then a, we called the spirit in, and he, a pure white dove landed. I mean, you know, and we saw it, and yeah. met multiple people. And so since then, we we knew without a doubt this was God's deal. Yeah. And so we spent all these years trying to do it, raise the money by the grace of God. Sherry and I are the biggest donors, both in cash and then in art, because we believe this is what God told us to do with our life. Just like he told you to do this TV station. When you're sure it's God, you do whatever it takes to get it That's done. That's right. You know? And, and so, uh, with, with the friends that we have all around the country, the prayer intercessors, thousands of people have donated to make this garden happen. And now the fruit is coming forth, which was salvations, healings, baptisms, water baptisms, deliverance of all kind of addictions and yeah. abuse things and it's just amazing and it's because of the prayers of the saint the prophecy mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of it and get to tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> well the news affiliate that came as a skeptic that really didn't believe any of this. Yeah. Tell yeah, us what was, happened to him. We, we know when, the, when we got sued that put it on the front page of newspapers all over America because another cross was going up and the atheists now were attacking it and now we got sued. Associated Press picked it up and so we were getting news coverage all over the United States. So a bad thing happened and then God brought good out of it. It didn't feel too good to me. <laughs> but, but he was using it to have secular media talk about his cross and Jesus. And so one of the TV crews that came out was the San Antonio affiliate with CBS News. And they're hearing about these miracles and people are telling them stuff happening. And the guy's sitting there, reporter, interviewing me, holding the microphone. And I'm telling him about this visible, visible glory dust that forms on this mountain. And when we talk about Jesus Christ, and suddenly I look and his hand starts turning golden, like a glitter bottle was just starting to cover his hand as he's interviewing me. And I pointed to his cameraman and I said, come over and get a picture of this. This is the real deal. You're getting to see a miracle live on film right now. And so they, they filmed it. I mean, they're yeah. reporters, you well, know? you've taken a lot of pictures. Yeah. I've yeah. seen a lot yeah. of pictures. Yeah, well, the thing about that particular story, though, CBS ran it. It ran it on the affiliates, and it went all over the place. 
Yeah, but, did but, it. but then the, the finish, you know, one year I was here with you and I just got to NRB and another film crew from Florida named Invicta, they came out to do a documentary and as they were filming the sculptures, big patches of gold started forming on the eyes of Christ on my divine servant sculpture that where he was washing Peter's feet. And they're filming and this miracle starts happening. And, and it freaks them out, it freaks me out. I come up there, it's about coming to NRB. And they said, you gotta come see this before you go to NRB. And so I was stunned. I'd never seen it size of oatmeal flakes. And they showed me, and, and then I went over to the uh, fishermen, and it was across the net where Christ holds out the fishing net and calls people to follow him. And it covered that. And then I looked down on the Star of David, on the Messiah base, and there on the, art, on the uh, what is it, the uh, symbol of the, of the Jews, the uh, menorah. On the menorah, it turned gold. And then they said, well, let's go look at the other sculptures. And so we went over to the Great Commission, which is the world, the word, the Bible, and the rock, and right there on go ye into the world, mm -hmm. God started covering that. And they wow. got it all on high digital film. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we're going to talk some more about some more uh, gardens being amen. Yeah, amen. Being built. More miracles. <laughs> Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Your next text could save a life. Help CTN bring hope to the hurting, feed the hungry, and reach the lost. You can make a difference today. Text CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. That's CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. I had gone through a complete breakdown many years ago. I had moved to this area. And I was driving across Howard Franklin Bridge one night when the Lord gave me this song. It's for somebody today. Never give up, okay? If you listen closely. Never give up. Never give up. Jesus never gave up on you. My friend, never give up, don't you ever give up. His love will always see you through. So never give up, never give up. You were lost, but now you're found. So never give up, never give up. The Lord will never let you down. Let's say you're walking along, just singing a song, and something goes wrong on your way. Oh, the sky seems so black because you're on the wrong track. You say, today is just not my day. Well, then you stumble and fall, but get up and stand tall. Don't throw your life away because you're going to grow up if you'll never give up. This is what I have to say. Listen now, come on. Never give up, never give up because Jesus never gave up on you. My friend, never give up, don't you ever give up. His love will always see you through. So never give up, never give up. You were lost, but now you're found. So never give up, never give up. The Lord will never let you down. 
can you trust in a friend to be there to the end? And then they turn their back on him. But Jesus waits there in line. He's been there all the time. He wants to help you through. So if you stumble and fall, just get up and stand tall. You know the Lord will make a way if you'll just never give up. Absolutely. Come on. So never give up. Never give up. Because Jesus never gave up on you. I said never give up. Never give up. His love will always see you through. So never give up. Never give up. You were lost, but now you're found. Never give up. Never give up. The Lord will never let you down. I said never give up. Don't you ever give up. Never, never give up. We've been talking to Max Griner, and if you missed the first part, go to YouTube or something and get it because it is an exciting happening. And I, I don't think we're even touching the miracles that are gonna take place because of what Max and a lot of other people have done. Now, Max, you've got a sculpture in your hand. Yes, sir. That I really love because I use that Bible right. all you, the time. Yes, sir, and you got the divine servant of Jesus washing Peter's feet on the Bible. That's yes. the one. And so this is the living word where people can see it and then read it. Right. <laughs> And we love it. Now, what do you, you do for a living? Well, um, you the fastest, give I'm an artist. I'm a, I'm a sculptor. I'm a painter. I'm an architect. Got a degree in architecture. Uh, write, do photography, do a whole bunch of stuff. But you don't do that for a living. Yeah, yeah. And plus, I mow grass and uh, have a paper route. <laughs> now, um, God's blessed me. In 1978, my wife Sherry and I, we decided to leave the world of advertising and architecture to pursue a career in art and we were young and attractive back in the old days and <laughs> now we're older all these years later and uh, still uh, attractive <laughs> she is so she you is. still have your degree in architecture oh, yeah. yeah no I have yeah. a degree in architecture and now it's God's used it but yeah. you know I got an architecture and I always thought artists starve I never knew anybody that lived then I got an architect degree and practiced in architecture and figured out, God, you know, they can starve too. <laughs> They're not the only ones. And so I said, God, can I just be an artist? And the Holy Spirit said, go for it. Put out a fleece. Really? I was going to go get a master's degree in architecture. And he said, no, be my artist. So that's what I did. And in 78, Sherry and I moved to Texas and uh, back to Texas from California and started art making secular stuff, wildlife, nature, landscape, people, things. I didn't know anybody that would buy Christian art, Bob. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't know anybody. There wasn't anybody doing it way back then, 78. And, uh, but, but then God told me to do the divine servant, and I disobeyed, and there were all kind of problems in the economy crash. My wife got a life-threatening illness. My dad got an incurable illness, and then I, I Nothing was working. We were running out of money. We were down out of money. And, and, and finally, I said, God, what was that you wanted to do again? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I finally obeyed, did the small sculpture. It resulted in the big sculpture. And as a matter of fact, uh, Herman Bailey here, you're um, on your team. He saw me at the show the first time I showed the small sculpture. And I didn't know who he was. It was like a wild guy to me, <laughs> one of them wild, charismatic guys. And I was so kind of Baptist. And, uh, but he spoke a prophetic word. He said, this would be beautiful life size. And he prayed for me. And I never dared to believe that I could do a sculpture that big because they're so expensive. And they're, just very, and they're a long time. But his prophecy began, Herman's prophecy allowed me to do the great big one. And so I did the life size and then God took my whole life and flipped it. I prayed for those 
gifts of the Holy Spirit in July of 89, called the Baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Empowerment, and uh, we started praying for people. They started getting saved, they started getting healed, they started getting baptized, and I mean, that just messed us up. And, uh, <laughs> but, but it was good, and it was in the book, you know, and then shortly after that, we met you. And so that began a career of art, making Christian art, and God sustained us, and like everybody, we've had the ups and downs, but you know, without a crisis, you, know, you don't need any miracles, <laughs> right? No I mean, test, the, no testimony. Yeah, that's right, but it's, it's, it's those moments, and, and God loves a good story. Mm -hmm. and, and so all these years, you and others have prayed for us, and I've got now these compositions that have come from Him, and they're, and they're divine, and they're, and they're great, uh, because they're His. And, and so that's what we've been doing, it's making art, and then we did the garden vision, was now at the latter part of my life as I get older. And I thought I was through. I mean, and, and then he springs this line of Judah thing on us and said, now I want you to do that. So I don't know what's in the future, but I know it's like, like I told somebody, it doesn't make any difference where you're going as long as you know who you're following. Yes, and that's if you're right. following that's Jesus, important. just follow him. Trust him, go where he says, even if you're not sure. And so that's kind of how we've made a living and we've been blessed and don't have to pick up very many road kills. We, we've been able to sell art, you know, and uh, we don't even have to shoot bows and arrows as much anymore and catch fish out of the lake, you know, because God's provided. Amen. Wow. wow. Well, you've got two gardens being built. Tell us about yeah, that. You know, how the did original, those come about? The original vision, and, and Mahesh Chavda spoke to it too, is this wasn't just supposed to be one garden, but multiple gardens because it's a new way to reach the unchurched lost and so right now we have two more gardens that are going in uh, they've already broken ground one is in minnesota at owatonna just south of minnesota and dr mm -hmm. peterson uh, tim peterson sheree uh, are the pastors of this uh, family church and uh, family christian church and they're putting in the garden in Minnesota. And I think they're gonna do half of it uh, indoors. They got a great big giant building because it gets so cold in Minnesota. Yeah. Yes. I was up there the last time and it was colder on Mars. I mean, it was colder in Minnesota than it was on Mars, you know? <laughs> so they're gonna do kind of half and half. But then, and they're also building a second garden, um, uh, Christ Central Ministries, just south of Columbia on 3,000 acres that God South gave them. Carolina. And they're gonna build a great big uh, garden there, just like the one in Kerrville <coughs> that gets people saved and do, do a lot of other things on the property to bless the Christian world. And, and they're like a Salvation Army kind of organization in South Carolina that helps the needy and the poor and just have a wonderful reputation. And they've broken ground on their site, so we now have two more. And if you think about even like the shape of a cross, we got one down in Texas in the central. Now we got one on the east coast and we got one at the north up in Minnesota. So you can pray for some place like uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, some place out uh, west. San Francisco. <laughs> That'd be a you good know, place with for, for a good place for another garden. And, and the remarkable thing about these things is, is people come when they see the big art, the big monumental uh, empty cross, the big sculptures and it's a free tourist attraction. Yeah. And they just pull off by themselves or with their family, and suddenly they find the gospel in multiple languages written in stone, and, and they get saved and healed, and, and it's a surprise. Doesn't take TV, doesn't yeah. take radio, doesn't take internet, doesn't even take evangelists or preachers. Yeah. It's the pure word of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, yes. yeah. and then they go in this cross and they pray, and they're transformed and it's just the most wonderful thing. You remember when you came to Florida? Oh, you bet. I was actually there, I think, twice with you. Yeah, yeah. on the... Um, trailer. Brought the Divine Servant on a big trailer. No, not well, that time. Oh, what? When, you, when I called you and said, I think these people want to put in another garden mm -hmm. up at the line of Georgia and Florida, you remember that? Yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I keep prayer journals. <laughs> I now, forget a lot of stuff now. You're writing a book. Yeah, I am writing a book, yes. And That's, what's it called? Well, it's called The Garden. And uh, what I've done, I've had my friends bug me for years, along with the Holy Spirit, my wife. And this is kind of a draft of the, the cover 
but it's going to be the 14-year story of the Garden Vision that began with the prophecy of Mahesh Chabda. And because I have documented every day of my life of what God's done in the prayer journals, I have, a, I have the 12 feet long worth of prayer journals. I do it by hand and I put them in there. And, uh, and every day I travel with a little card and I write down all the prayers that I pray for people and they pray for me. They now pray something for me. happened today. <laughs> yeah. but this morning. Yeah, there's a hundred of stories. Yeah, well, yeah, this one just walked in the door a few minutes and go, you, the lady says, uh, you're Max Ryan? And I said, yes, ma'am. Her name is Tina Mann. She said, six years ago, you prayed for me and my daughter. I was in, going through a terrible divorce and some and things happening there. And she asked me to pray for a husband for her daughter and for her. And I actually remember that because it's pretty unusual. You pray. For, and she said, Mr. Grant, I want you to know, right after that, I met my future husband and also my daughter got engaged and she got married and just got two babies, you know. And that, uh, that just happened. So you, I've got it written in my journal six years ago that I prayed for some blonde-headed lady and her daughter at the NRB convention, and now I can put it in there, and God answered that prayer. And that's the way he is with all of us. He will answer them, but you may need to get a prayer journal because some of this stuff happened so fast and so long ago, the human brain just can't remember all of it. Yeah. Because I got this, I can give him the glory and the credit, and, and yes. in truth. Yeah, Amen. that is so true. You want me to tell you a little bit about, more about the book part yes. of it? Okay, here's what's interesting about this book. It is a 14-year journey um, of what we're doing, but it's going to be a, a written book. It's not going to be a picture book. I thought I was going to do an art book because I'm an artist, and it's a garden of art. But God said, no, I want it to be the story of my people and my kids that have built this. So I've taken these journals, and I get up every morning at 3.30 to about 4.30 in the morning, for the last two years and I write until about 9 a.m. and I go through these journals and I've documented all of the people that have prayed and sold and the miracles and all of the documentation and I put that together in a book and I've just finished the manuscript and sent it to a professional editor in North Carolina, Donna Hatch, and she emailed me, I opened her email this morning and she's a professional uh, you know, uh, editor. And she said, Max, I'm getting chill bumps reading your book. <laughs> and I, I said, I think that's good. <laughs> you know, that's she good. Said, this is going to be an amazing story. And the reason it's amazing is God's story. It's kind of like going to yes. be like reading the book of Acts. It's not about Max Griner. It's not even about my art. It's about the God given a prophecy to a man and a woman. They grabbed a hold of it. And then their friends and their prayer intercessors joined them they've done this thing together that really is quite amazing mm -hmm. but it's because of the body of Christ and people like mm -hmm. you that it exists today yes and so we're just blessed to be a part of it and honored that oh. God would pick us as two of the people he used well I, I want to pray for this man here father I thank you for Max I thank you for his dedication to you seeing all these miracles take place. And Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving. You are the miracle worker. And Lord, we just pray that this is just the beginning. Amen. Yes, Lord. We don't know the future, but you know. And we know the one who holds the future. We thank you for our Father. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, amen. thank you. Thank you know, I've you. read that book we love several times, and there's no retirement in there. <laughs> you know? I've read it too. And so even though we're getting older, I think God's going to keep using us if we're willing. Amen. And I just thank God for you so and this too. ministry, and I bless your ministry and your lives. And wow. folks, if you're looking for an honest work that's full of love and integrity, I encourage you to support what these people do because you are amazing and God is so pleased with you. Uh, pleased with you. The same way. This life is mine to live. Jesus, you gave me life. So now 
I'll live it all for you. I sing my songs to you. You filled my heart with so much love. One day so long ago, Jesus, you died for me. Then you rose again. So I praise your name because this life is mine. This life is mine. This life is mine to live. Hallelujah. The past is gone forever. Now because of what you did. Each day I spend with you, Jesus, there's something new and wonderful. So I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings and all you've given me. I praise your name. This life is mine. This life is mine. I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings and all you've given me. I praise your name. This life is mine. This life is mine. Thank you, Gloria. Gloria. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Oh, now it's time for We the People. The more informed we are about our nation's Christian heritage and the freedoms, the better we will be. This week's edition of We the People. Listen close. Today on We the People, we're going to talk about voting. As a Christian, you are accountable to God, so who should you vote for? That's a decision that you need to make for yourself, but we're going to look at what our founders and some of our early leaders had to say about it. Samuel Adams, founding father and governor of Massachusetts. Let each citizen remember at the moment he is offering his vote that he is not making a present or a compliment to please an individual, or at least that he ought not so to do, but that he is executing one of the most solemn trusts in human society for which he is accountable to God and his country. Matthias Burnett, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Norwalk back in 1803. Look well to the characters and qualifications of those you elect and raise to office and places of trust. Think not that men who acknowledge not the providence of God nor regard his laws will be uncorrupt in office, firm in defense of the righteous cause against the oppressor, or resolutely oppose the torrent of iniquity. Watch over your liberties and privileges, civil and religious, with a careful eye. James Garfield, 20th President of the United States. Now more than ever, the people are responsible for the character of their Congress. If that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it is because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. If it be intelligent, brave, and pure, it is because the people demand these high qualities to represent them in national legislature. If the next centennial does not find us a great nation, it will be because those who represent the enterprise, the culture, and the morality of the nation do not aid in controlling the political forces. Francis Grimke, pastor and one of the founders of the NAACP. If the time ever comes when we shall go to pieces, it will be from inward corruption from the disregard of right principles, from losing sight of the fact that righteousness exalteth a nation, but that sin is a reproach to any people. The secession of the southern states in 1860 was a small matter with the secession of the Union itself from the great principles enunciated in the Declaration of Independence, in the Golden Rule, in the Ten Commandments, in the Sermon on the Mount. Unless we hold and hold firmly to these great fundamental principles of righteousness, our union will be only a covenant with death 
and an agreement with hell. Noah Webster, known as the father of American education. In selecting men for office, let principle be your guide. Regard not the particular sect or denomination of the candidate, look to his character. When a citizen gives his suffrage to a man of known immorality, he abuses his trust. He sacrifices not only his own interest, but that of his neighbor. He betrays the interest of his country. Amen to that. The father of American education providing every reason and encouragement for us to vote. We owe to these great men to research every candidate and judge and vote accordingly. Thanks for joining us and God bless you. Well, we've been talking about that wonderful lion, yes. the Lion of Judah, done and paid for by Christians. That's right. And it's in Jerusalem. How amazing is that? And the, if you only know what it took for Max to get that over there <laughs> and nah. set it up and all that. Well, yes. we've got good news for you, and it's brand new, fresh revelation that that lion just uh, May 5th. Yeah, May 5th was May just installed. 5th. I think it's Bloomberg Park, Bloom something park. And it's between the King David Hotel and the wall, yes. the Wailing Wall, as we call it. And you'll, you, when you go there, if you go there, you will see this great lion. And yes. uh, there's a little plaque on it. And I think it says the lion of the tribe of Judah, of Judah yeah. and given yeah. by Christians from the United States. Yeah. So it is a marvelous, marvelous piece of artwork. It is. And you know, honey, uh, the man that is in charge of all the artwork outside in Jerusalem, his name is Amos Cohen, and he said, this is my favorite piece of artwork in all of Jerusalem. So it's in a wonderful place for tourists to go see it, and they know who gave it, and it's just a wonderful uh, thing to happen between the United States and Israel. So we the, hope you'll go see it. The Lion of Judah will break every chain. <laughs> That's the Lion of Judah. Yeah. Oh, we're so thankful for Max and yes. his great talent. Yes, and his heart. And his heart. And his wife. So right now we're going to go to a song to close out. Gloria Elliott is singing for us. Mm -hmm. He's been so faithful, and he really has. Yes, he has. God bless you. Hallelujah. If only we were as faithful to him as he is to us. Think about that today. In my moments of fear, through every pain, every tear, there's a God who's been faithful to me. When my strength was all gone When my heart had no song Still in love he proved faithful to me Church, every word God has promised is true Those things I thought were impossible. You know what? I've seen my God do. He's been faithful, faithful to me. Hallelujah. 
just looking back his love and mercy I see though in my heart I had questioned and I failed to believe yet he was faithful faithful to me powerful words here when my heart looked away there were times when I couldn't even pray but God was so faithful <laughs> to me those days I spent selfishly reaching out for what pleased me even then my God was faithful to me think about this every time I come back to him precious Jesus hallelujah you know what you'd be standing there with open arms and I could see again he's been faithful faithful to me looking back his love and mercy I see though in my heart I did question and there were times that I really didn't even believe, but he was faithful, faithful. to you and to you God's been faithful faithful